Today, I'll show you how I made this flex or what I call counter bag. It's fully adjustable from the ceiling, the height, the various segments. It weighs about two pounds. And the reason why I call it the flex or counter bag is because if you're hitting it just a little bit, it reacts a little bit. But as you increase the tempo, it increases the tempo. And you have to block with your legs. You strike with your legs. It's just a real interesting combination. There are versions of this bag that are out there that cost $80 to $90. I'll show you how to make this version easily for around $12. Interested? Here we go. For this build, you can use all sorts of different options on pool noodles. I made my first one with a thinner pool noodle. You can use this big, thicker pool noodle. But the best one is this pool noodle. And it's not always available. It's usually around spring, summer time <laughs> when things are normal. And I like it because it's got this section here and this section here. So those are your options. Here's version 1.0. Here at Rattle Along, there's a little bit of weights. I think I actually put some bolts in there. And I'm using corks from champagne bottles because they were a little thicker. And just glued them in place. This is a real lightweight version. Probably weighs well less than a pound. Again, I was just using a bunch of scraps of cord and just tried things out. This guy is 10 inches, these are 15 inches and 14 inches. It's great for maybe kids or younger martial artists. It will work fine. This is just some blue tape on the end. So that was version one. This is version two plus. And I say two plus because I came up with something I think is actually gonna work out better. I used that, almost looks like a Q-tip floaty. I cut this one off to represent the head, and that is 10 inches. These two sections are identical, and they're around 16 inches a piece. This one floats back and forth, and then again, I used the corks on these two sections originally. The corks work well, and it gives something for the eyes to hold on to. That's, that's in there pretty good. So if you're really looking for an inexpensive build, pool noodle, couple dollars. Corks, if you have them, certainly you can purchase them. The eyes, you can get a bunch of those for a buck. They don't have to be this thick. They can be actually smaller than that. You can actually put this on basketball courts too, or outside on a hook. Now the thing I did differently on this is I replaced the corks with this section here. See if I can pull it out. There's a lot of friction in here. So you really don't even have to glue these guys. So what I have here is a half inch PVC and two end caps. And then the screws are in the end caps and they're in there pretty good. But the great thing about this is that I filled it up with sand to give it some sort of weight component. On the earlier version, on the bottom of this, I actually had put in a bunch of washers and bolts and things like that. A little less sophisticated and bolts can be expensive. Sand is fairly cheap and you can probably find it outside somewhere or even dirt and nobody's going to complain about you getting it. And then I might actually finish this off by putting in an eye hook here so I can put an additional weight down there if I want to change the dynamics of, of how it works. So this build you're going to need the noodle. I'm going to use this version. You need 95 pounds paracord. You could use black. I'm going to use blue because I have it. 95 pound paracord means it's 95 pounds worth of strength and that should be plenty for this. Some screw eyes. In this case, I'm using 1 8 inch. Six end caps, one 10 inch piece of PVC pipe, two 16 inch pieces of PVC pipe. And that's it. Pretty simple build. You could use glue if you really wanted to, but I'm gonna go with friction fit and see how that works. Tools you'll need. Some sort of lighter to melt the paracord. A pipe cutter is pretty helpful, but not necessary. A file and a sponge sander. A pair of scissors to cut the paracord. A screwdriver to help with the eyes, putting them in. And a drill. And a drill bit at a comparable size so that the threads show outside of the shaft of the eye. Pretty important because you want to just make a starter hole to screw this in so it's a nice and tight fit. 
Some other tools that are not necessary but nice to have is a center punch. You can get that for a couple of bucks at Harbor Freight and a wrench to hold this so that when you're drilling it's completely safe. The first thing you want to do is try to find the center of the end cap. What I do is I put it where I think it needs to go and then I rotate it around and measure it off best as I can. That's pretty close. And the center punch is going to allow you to make sure that you put the drill bit in the right place when you drill the hole. You may be tempted to hold it, but I don't advise you to do so because if that drill somehow moves around, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Take your time. And that looks like it's pretty good center to me. If you're having trouble getting your screw eye in that hole, just put it on the table like that and just start turning around and then we'll go. And it's going to be tight and that's good. So you can take the screwdriver and twist that guy in there. And that's in there real good. You're not going to knock that out. Do that five more times. From here you got a couple options. Before you put that eye on there, tape on the bottom, keep it like this, take the pipe, fill it that way. Or what might be easier, put it in a Gatorade bottle. If you don't have a funnel, you can easily make one. Just take a piece of paper, fold it in half. Wrap that guy around like this. Put some tape on the outside. Pour your sand in. When you get towards the top, you'll see that it just stops going in. And you can just shake a little bit and there you go. Full of sand. Cap it off. and then do that to all three sections. If for some reason it doesn't seem to be going in place, in other words, it's bigger than what it's intended to be, you might have to take a mallet and carefully hit the eyes. You can actually take both eyes out, put some tape on there like I mentioned before, cap it off, and then screw the eyes in if you're so worried about it. But, but you might have to tap it down so that it fits in there. And that's snug. Not going in there easy. Now it's moving around a little bit, so I might have to actually glue that in place or just wrap it with tape on either end. That would work too. Before I fill this guy with sand, I wanted to fit check because I did cut off three quarters of an inch. So it's gone from 16 inches to five and a quarter inches. You can see that's a tight fit. I'll be able to push it down just a tad more. This flush approaches where I want it right there. I marked it with a permanent marker right around the ring here. This is the top of the cylinder. Now I'm gonna take that off and fill it up with sand. That guy's filled with sand. I'm gonna put the end cap on. If for some reason this wasn't a tight enough fit, you can use something like hockey tape or electrical tape right here to increase the friction. If you're totally confident that you're good to go, then you just glue it in place. To finish the build, you're gonna have two 30 inch long, 95 pound paracord and two eight inch long, 95 pound paracord. This is gonna be the top element and then this is gonna be the connector between the three sections. What type of knot to use? For demonstration purposes, just imagine that this eye is this ball of tape. You can use what's called a bowline. So what you do on the bowline is you just wrap it around and you make a hole. Rabbit goes out of the hole, around the tree, goes back in the hole. And there's your bowline. Do it one more time. So there's the tree, there's the hole for the rabbit. Rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, goes back in the hole. This is a big sailing knot and in rock climbing. And that's how you tie all the sails to the halyards into the sheets. I've completed all the little knot tying exercise here. This is just a simple overhand knot on top. That's what you'll hang it by. Then we have two triple fishermen's. The great thing about this is they're adjustable and they're pretty tight. But if for some reason they loosen up, all you have to do is just pull on the tails on either end and that knot will cinch right down. Two different colors of rope to show you what I call the triple fisherman. I'm going to do this blue one first. And you come over like that and you make a fish. One, make sure you got plenty of tail. Here's the second one. You can see where my finger is. You feed it through the center of all that rope stuff and follow this line. There you go. And then you just tighten it up like that. 
That's a nice clean rope and it has a lot of friction to it when done correctly. Now we'll do it from the other side. Cross over, wrap it around once. Again, plenty of tail. Wrap it around twice. You know, come around here like this and then run it through. That's important right there. Loop it through, loop it through, and then just tighten it up. And if you've done it correctly, it will look just like that. And then you can bring it close together like, spread it out. And that's the principle that we're trying to use so we can adjust the height for the triple bag. Now that I've been using this version for a good bit, I want to show you some of the adjustments I've made. I have bowline knots on every segment. Now you could use a bigger, thicker paracord and it would probably hold fine no matter what knot you used. The fisherman knots worked okay. I've put in some figure eights here to make some adjustments and make sure that they don't slip at all. You could use a straight line if you wanted all the way to the ceiling. You can see here that I've added a carabiner in this extra length into the eyelet that's connected to the ceiling. The reason why is because then I can take that down and just leave that piece hanging there for the next time I want to work out with the bag. This eyelet on the ceiling is just a two inch eyelet. I drilled the hole, put it in there, and it's been working great. This carabiner is just a lightweight carabiner. I think it can hold 40, 50 pounds, and that's also working out great. Thumbs up and comments are always appreciated. If you like these kind of things, check out my channel. I make and break all sorts of stuff. I have several other mixed martial arts builds, variations on this theme. I post at least once a week, and if I have time, I post more. You just never know what you're gonna see on my channel.